if you had to give somebody three, maybe maybe they're either new or they're struggling and they're trying to get a, to have a really good start to 2023 and have a bunch of success. What are three yeah. tips you would give them right off the bat to jump out and have a okay. great year this year? I would say the three things you need to do in 2023 to be successful at another level, a higher level than you're at today. Number one is going to be a summation of all three, order. If you have order inside your ears, you will have the ability to structure anything you want. When people talk about manifesting, saying things out loud, that can only happen if you have order. Hey, welcome back to the CA Power Players Podcast. Today, we got a super special guest, man. This dude can speak. He's about to throw down. Welcome to the channel of the podcast, Ali Sala. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me, Cody. I'm fired up to be here with you today, buddy. Dude, I love hanging with you. You're an amazing individual. Uh, Ali has the uh, insurance agency, The Invested American. He's also got yes, a certain company, Ali Sala, obsessed with your success, man. He's obsessed with your success. He's going to yes. bring some success obsessions today. Ali, I want to start out with this, man. You spoke on yes. the Ultimate Agent Tour. Yes, loved it. Loved and it. And you were flipping phenomenal. Okay, so I want yes, to hear it. Like, we're interviewing right now. We're hanging out. But I want to use you to use this clip. Anybody's thinking about ever hiring Ali to work with him, have him speak to anybody. The dude has passion. He has I energy like that. nobody's freaking business. And he is a beast with an awesome heart and a good dude. And I'm excited you're hanging out on the podcast today. Buddy, I'm grateful to be here. Dude, I was so excited when uh, you talked about the ultimate agent thing. And I just I just love the whole concept. I love the reality show. I love how you did the winner last year at 8%. And I, I assume you're probably going to do something similar this year, make it a big deal when you announce the winner. You know, just fun, fun times. Uh, and being able to go out and speak in the cities. Look, as much as I loved it for the opportunity to start building relationships, start working, I'm meeting people and start, you know, mm. just – getting myself out there, man, I just appreciate, you know, you giving us the platform, you know, at the Absolutely. same time. So I felt like I got to learn a lot uh, while I was out. Cause I got to be with other guys. I sp spent time, spent some relationship time with some of these guys, with Frank, with David and a host of other guys. I can start listing people and I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings, yeah. but uh, dude, it was just such a learning experience. Uh, I felt like every time I spoke, I just got better. You know, I feel like when we yeah. did that show, uh, I think it was Friday night. We did it in big Dallas, right? In big D. Yep. I think everybody that was on that stage, dude, they gave their best performance because they practiced day in, day. I mean, what do we do? Five cities in five nights or yeah. five cities in five days, whatever. Yeah. I mean, it's just insane. But that was just repetition because then when people got done, they talked about what they did, how they did and how they improved the next time. I think each cat just got better. Man. Yeah, I agree, yeah. man. I agree. Yeah. Um, here's a question I want to start out with today. Okay. Who is, who is Ali? Who is Ali? Ali is, that's a good question. That's a good question. I want to, I want to make this right. I would tell you that Ali is a man that loves God, that wants to serve God and do good. So Ali is a husband hmm. and he is a husband after he's a disciple to God that he works for, you know, he works to serve God and do his works. I do that because I'm married. I'm a husband. So I have a role to play. I'm a father. I have four incredible young adults. I say young adults because they're not kids. I mean, I got 21, 20, and 19-year-old twins. They're right? old. They're, they're older, right? Uh, I'm saying that to you because I'm a father, and I have a responsibility on that. Yeah. And then I believe that I'm a entrepreneur that works to help develop people to the best of their ability to be the best versions of themselves. Mm -hmm. Ali's a coach. He's a trainer. He's bought in, right? He wants to work with his people, invest with them, and have a real relationship with them to help them be the best version of themselves. Yes. So I don't know, maybe it's that, right? a faithful guy, a husband, a father, and a man that's out there to help anyone yeah. that he can touch and be a part of to make the world a better place. Because I think that's our duty. Yeah, hundred percent. I agree with that too. By the way, everything you're saying, I I completely agree with. Uh, it's accurate. You you think about the Ultimate Agent Tour. Everybody, the end of the tour, everybody's calling him Father Ali because he's um he's 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 like praying over the group in the <laughs> in the bus. We you prayed. I mean? We prayed some. Yeah, we prayed a lot, right? For our food, for the trip. Yep. We're about to get on a big jet. Yep. Like you know what I mean? The, the, it Absolutely. Was, it was cool. It was cool yes. that like. 
in the moment, we're super busy, yep. got a lot going on. You're remembering to give God thanks and like pray yep. on everybody and like think about everybody, you know, like it, it, you're, you're, you know, I, I, I appreciate that. I know we, yes, we you know, the Father Alley thing, we played some fun with, but sure, yeah, I, I love it. I love it. Yes, sir. Yes, but sir. Just in general, like it was a blast. It was such a cool trip. It, but it was a blast. I love, look, I loved every bit of it. I think you, you, you did a great job. You, every hotel we all stayed at. No, if anyone had anything to complain, they, I, I don't know what that is. We stayed at nice hotels. You, you, you took care of everybody. I mean, everyone put their money in, did their thing, their obligation. But man, you, you made it great. I don't know if there's ever anybody that I ever left at one of the cities. And I felt like someone felt like they didn't get what they expected from the event, yeah. you know? Yeah, because uh, it's always easy when you do events like you do. Oh well, you know they're just rah rah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We need rah rah. Rah rah is part of the deal. Okay, everybody needs rah rah. You know, yeah. I mean, let, let, let's be clear. Nobody is in a welfare line high fiving for a block of cheese. Okay, nobody does that. I didn't say that I haven't had some. And by the way, melted that that cheese back in the day. I used to melt it on some of my bread. It's just awesome. Okay, anyway, that's a separate story for a different day, but. When you're excited about something, you're naturally excited about it. When people say, oh, I don't get that way. No, you're just not excited about that. Yeah. There is something that gets you excited. There's a reason why you watch TV, every sporting event, there's guys with no shirts on with paint, you know, and no one thinks they're crazy. Man, there's some, what do they call it? Committed fans. Man, those guys are crazy about their team. Why, yeah. when we get excited about what we're doing and we're actually making a difference and we get excited about it and that's how we put paint on our face or that's how we take our shirts off. Mm. Why does that seem a little weird? You do rah-rah, you give good solid content and you rah-rah their butts out to go that's practice those, that content you taught them. That's a good you analogy, know? man. And, and you never ran on stage without a shirt and paint on your chest. Just for the record, he didn't do that. Okay. Um, I love the, I love the analogy though. Um, <laughs> I want you to think back. Um, tell us about your childhood, man. H how did you become the person you are today? What'd you go man, through? Well, Where'd you grow up? What, what, why are you the way you are? Did you always want to do business? Okay. Did, you, did you always make great money? You know, tell me. So I, I want you to know that it's funny. You know, one of the six core things that we talk about with Ali Salah obsessed with your success when we coach people is about health. Mm. And, you know, when you hear health, a lot of times, Cody, you know, I know that you like to work out and you like to practice certain regimens, right? I know you like to do the sauna. You learn yeah. a lot about it. You do the sauna. Okay. Amen. So I used to sell saunas back in the day. So I sold saunas and that's how I fell in love with them. Okay. And mm. I'll get to that on a separate note. But, but when we talk about health, you know what the greatest health concern needs to always be? And I know it's like being used a lot now since so COVID, but mental health. Mm -hmm. And that's a fact. When you talk health, people don't think mental health. Look, if you don't have mental health, you won't have physical health. You're not going to have a good digestive system. You are not going to have your legs not, you know, struggle from pains or aches, whatever might be going on. Man, if your mental health is not good, that's yeah. the problem. You ask me, where look, I've shared with people, I'm from Detroit, Michigan, home of Henry Ford from Dearborn. And I grew up in a blue collar home. My dad was a Ford factory guy. Him and my mom were married about 24 years. I grew up, I had two siblings, a sister and a brother. And you know, we grew up, we grew up in a blue collar home and my dad was pretty abusive. Loved my father, God rest his soul. He passed away a few years ago. And, uh, but he was an abusive man. Mm. And you know what I learned? Uh, Cody, and I'll tell you, you know, a part of my mental health strategies, I'm always about, I have a business coach. I see a therapist and you know why I do these things? Cause I'm growing, man. Every day I got to get better. So I do these things to continue to excel and grow. Right. Well, one of the recent topics we've been talking about is why I am the way that I am. And how does that relate with other people about certain things? And this was a big, aha uh -huh, that just recently we were just talking about why am I the way that I am? Look, when I was growing up, I grew up in an abusive home where my dad was pretty violent. violent. Mm. I mean, uh, verbally, physically, we could go on and on and on. Talk about, and we're, we don't need to, but that's the way it was. The reason my mom finally divorced my father was because we pretty much begged her to. Because it's like, look, I get to move on with my life. And like, I'm afraid your life might be in danger. Mm. Okay. And I want to move on with my life. I can't have my mom's life in danger. And I'm trying to move on like a young man trying to do something with my life. Right. So, uh, my uncles throughout the years, and my uncles were in my circle. I always talk about you should have a circle of people around you that are helping you be the best version of yourself, but you got to take their feedback. Anytime my dad was abusive, physically, verbally, and my uncles heard about it, and I'm specifically speaking about uncles from my father's side, which by the way, 
I had like three of his brothers that were like great mentors and friends to me growing up. Mm. And they all taught me the same thing. Every single one in their own way would say, Cody, Hey, Ali, you should thank your dad for everything you're getting because he's teaching you what not to do. Now, remember this. You don't go repeat the cycle. You change the cycle. You mm. don't repeat the cycle. You change it. You make a difference. Right. And I never really understood what that all meant. Yeah. Dude, I get it. You know, this anxiety I used to feel growing up when my dad came home. Uh, uh-uh, We're not doing that in my house. You can talk to all my kids. They're 21 to 19, but they don't care if their dad had a good day or a bad day. <laughs> they ain't worried about what their dad's doing. They're going to be at home doing whatever they're doing. And they ain't worried about what dad's feeling. Yeah. But that's the way it's supposed to be. Your home is your safe place. So anything you do, you got to create a safe place. So I got to tell you, I learned that early on that when you learn something, you don't learn it to always apply it. You learn it to learn how to apply it better right? Learn from other people's mistakes. So I learned early on, all you got to learn from your dad. Your dad does good things. My dad's a freaking hard worker. You can't deny my dad. If someone needed to work 16 hours in a day, my dad was that guy. Mm. You know, my dad wasn't afraid of that. If a family member needed help with something, my dad would help him. He had his weaknesses, but he had these powerful strengths too that are attributes. I think I'm a loyal guy. I think if I work with somebody, I might work with you so much, you're going to ask me for a little bit of a break. Yeah. You know, because I want to help you be the best version of yourself. And that's not going to happen just overnight. And it's going to take discipline and work. So, you know, grow up. My, I, I met Shelly when I was in eighth grade and uh, I was crazy about her from that day moving forward. You know, my son just walked in. I love my son, Alexander. Oh, but, you know, Alexander. Yeah. Alexander Cody says, what's up? Yeah. You know, but uh, Throughout that whole time, dude, growing up and going through high school, it was challenging that I meet Shelly in eighth grade. And so, you know, we kind of grew up together. So that was kind of exciting, you know? So literally, I always say I fell in love with my maybe high school sweetheart because I met her in the summer of eighth grade going into ninth grade, you know, but she was my high school sweetheart. But I think she's only continued to get better as a person, as a woman in my heart, the love I have for it, it just continues to grow. You know, we had a baby in Chicago. We had Samantha, our first kid. We had our second kid in Tulsa, Theory. We had our twins, uh, Alexander and Ariel, down in Dallas. You love that they were born in Plano. And uh, then we moved back to Tulsa. And through that time, my wife and I, for 10 years, worked for a marketing company. And what we did is we did telecom. And we also did nutritional products. And then we expanded into selling saunas because that fit right in with nutritional products. So I learned about the sauna stuff. Dude, I learned about the saunas of like 2005, 2006, the far infrared wow. saunas. And I was using them then because I got into the business of selling fitness clubs. We sold Shape Express franchises. We sold another company called Sedona Fitness. We were in the fitness industry. We started selling fitness clubs where we kind of did a hybrid originally from the curbs model for women. But then we expanded it. Okay, did a much better woman's version. And then we did a co-ed model. So we were doing that as well as we were promoting our marketing business. Uh, during that time is when I learned how to speak in front of a room. Because you know what happens is if you're selling something, you end up in front of a few people. And then you yeah. start practicing. Well, one of the ultimate moments, man, was uh, when I was on stage in my telecom business. So we were selling telecom originally before we started selling nutrition, like I told you. But we're selling cell phones, internet. Act. We were selling dial-up internet. Okay, That's what I was selling in a multi-level marketing deal. Okay. But I want, you know, it got to a place, dude, I had over 10,000 people in my downline. I spoke in front of six or 7,000 people at a time. Okay. Wow. And it was awesome. And I'm earning residual income from all the, I mean, people are having satellite TV and I got dime, 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 coming in every month from different agents that had sold some dish network as an example, you know, and then people are on selling nutritional products they're on auto ship. Now I got agents on auto ship getting their nutritional products every month. You know, my downline was growing. Things were happening, man. And I give so much credit to the multi-level marketing experience that Shelly and I both had that got us when we found the insurance vehicle. It was a no-brainer. What was it about insurance that was such a no-brainer? Okay, so uh, I will tell you, one of the reasons insurance was such a no-brainer was timing. I needed to do something radically different. I was broke. I had no money. All the success I told you I had, I assure you, I squandered it. Okay. I made a lot of poor choices, but I talk about in our six pillars, you know, one of the whole concepts is you got to have time for everything. Really, time is like order. Okay. Order. Dude, when I got involved in the insurance business, the reason I got involved is the guy I spoke to was referring me to a bankruptcy attorney. 
because that's how bad my situation was. Mm. Okay. And then it's through that process, I learned about the insurance business. Yes. And they're like, okay, man, I just got to try Cause you know what it was? It was like a last ditch effort for me. You know, I already had a car repoed. Things were looking good. The marriage wasn't all pretty. I was like, man, I, what are you going to do? And it was, a, it was an all or nothing deal. And you know what? You saw the first person that told me yes. Saw the second person that told me yes. Made my first $1,000 commission. Made a $2,000 commission. Going, oh, my God. Does this stuff really happen? You know, like people actually are listening to me. Mm. This is incredible. And, you know, I, I learned more about products so I could be a better student of it. And then I learned, man, if I just go to people's homes and just tell them I'm here to serve them, they're going to buy from me because yeah. they will. You know, so I got to tell you, I think my ability to communicate, transfer the emotion, I think is a superpower. Yeah. And when I communicate and I train people, I don't just train them and do it. I tell them what I'm doing. Yeah. Do you know why I asked you that in the beginning of our meeting today? No, Ali, why'd you do that? Well, because it would get you to do this, this, and this. It'll make you think this and this and this. Tell somebody what you're doing with them. They'll appreciate it more because they're still going to fall for it. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Cody, I'm going to push your buttons. No, you're not. Watch this. And then you just push Cody's buttons, for example, right? If you want to do so, you just say, I'm going to do this. No, you're not. Yeah, you are. And you just walk it through, mm. you know? So a loyal guy. I think Ali is loyal and Ali is committed. That's what I would tell you. Yeah. Yeah. I, I so I'm just trying it. to carry that all the way through. Dude, you can feel it too. You know, um, when you jump into insurance, were you a natural? Mm -hmm. I love what my upline told me. They said, we didn't teach Ali how to sell. Mm. We showed Ali a system and a product and a concept, and he just jumped all over it. You know, yeah. I'll give you a simple example, Cody. And I think you and I have maybe have talked about this before. When I got involved in the insurance business, some coaching I got early on was, dude, show up at the office about 830. We'll get us a cup of coffee. We'll powwow a bit. We'll be at our first appointment by 1030. I'm talking about back in 2009 when there wasn't really any virtual stuff going on, right? He goes, man, we'll go out. We'll start running appointments. Okay. So really, we're at our first appointment by 1030, right? I'm like, okay. I learned that. I'm taking notes. I'm training with someone. So I'm, I'm going to be coachable. The moment it was green light on for Ali, the dumbest thing I ever heard was have your first appointment at 1030. Okay? It's like, that's insane. We're not doing that. First appointment, 8 o'clock. Why eight o'clock? Because you could call people at eight o'clock. So we'll knock on their door at eight o'clock, yep. you know? And you know, what's awesome about eight o'clock appointments. They're always there. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. The only guy that's not, there's a guy that goes to McDonald's early, man, or he goes to uh, steak and eggs or that local dinery that you have in town that serves breakfast. Okay. Yeah. And by the way, they're not two ninety nine for breakfast anymore either. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's no two ninety nine breakfast. No, that's okay? <laughs> Those days are done. But uh, where was I on that thought I was going to take you to? Uh, I'm yeah. drawing a blank. It'll come. No, you're me. good. Yeah. You were, you were talking through, um, g g you know, getting started at eight people are home. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So, right. So getting, getting started. So the new goal was when I started training people, Hey, we're going to go out and make sure we get in a house and make a sale before anybody else does for the day. Mm. So we weren't just going to outperform everybody. We're going to make the first sale day. You know how we do that? We get in somebody's house first. We yeah. don't wait. I was on the phone with an agent today. I'm going out with her tomorrow in the field. So I'm going to do some training with her tomorrow. Sure. I asked her about our nine o'clock appointment. She was telling me about nothing about the nine o'clock appointment sounds like an opportunity that I'm trying to do with this woman. The person is ill. Does it, is it well, and is older. I explained to, uh, when I was talking to crystal, crystal Marshall, she loved this woman. She's on the TIA team. She's just awesome. Okay. But crystal and I, I said, crystal, remember your time. We're going to drive to these people's homes. They don't live down the street. Okay. When we go see them, you and I are seeing them because we're building a business. We are in this for profit. We are not in this for charity. We do charity from the profit in the business that we do. Then we go out and be charitable and say, thank you, God. Here's what we're going to do. Okay. But we got to be profitable. So if we're going to set an appointment and drive 60 minutes, we got to get in front of a body that at least gets us in the game. You can't put me in front of somebody that is one, one leg into the tombstone. That's not how it's going to, that's not how you sell in, insurance companies. Don't sell insurance to guys with one foot in the tombstone. It doesn't work. I'm not trying to be a jerk. Nope. I, I didn't say let's not go see them, make them part of our day. I'm all in. They might know somebody. We might be able to help with something else. It might be totally different. Yeah. Respect. 
but we got to seize our time. So get me in front of someone where I could sit down, go over a needs assessment, ask the client the right questions so I can role model for you and you could go out and implement the exact same thing. But if I can't role model, it won't work. I'm not worried about selling, but I need real opportunities so you'll be able to have something to role model. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. If you had to give somebody three, maybe maybe they're either new or they're struggling and they're trying to get a, have a really good start to 2023 and have a bunch of success. What are three yeah. tips you would give them right off the bat to jump out and have a okay. great year this year? To have a great year this year, what are three things everyone needs to focus on? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it could be things that you did well, things you didn't do well when you started, things yeah. that, you know. Um, okay. You talk about every so, day. Mister, I would say the three things you need to do in 2023 to be successful at another level, a higher level than you're at today. Number one is going to be a summation of all three order. If you have order inside your ears, you will have the ability to structure anything you want. When people talk about manifesting, saying things out loud, that can only happen if you have order. Mm -hmm. So what is order for you? I'll tell you what order is for me. First thing in the morning, got to make sure that I wake up with a smile on my face and I'm grateful and I take time out to thank what I'm supposed to thank for what I have. That for me is God. I thank God for what I have and I intentionally say people's names or how I like, I don't call my daughter Ariel. I don't say, thank you God for Ariel. I say, thank you God for my cookie monster. Cause even though she's 19 years old, my daughter Ariel will forever be my cookie mom. A matter of fact, she'll sign things for me and it says cookie. On it, right. Awesome. So when I say I speak, I, I speak who I am, right. It's like, God, thank you for cookie monster. Thank you God for my, my son, Alexander. I'm just so grateful. I will tell God because I need that. So the first thing is in regarding order, it's the gratitude for what you already have. It's a magic potion. That's the first thing that we're going to make sure gets done. See, once we do that, then the second thing that you're going to do is now that you've done that, you're going to make sure you are good. Meaning if there's exercise you need to do every day or every other day, whatever your regimen is that makes you feel right, the exercise Mm. needs to be in the calendar. It might be the way you diet. Maybe you fast four or five days a week. Maybe you don't do sugar six days a week. Maybe you're low on whatever it is. What health things are you doing? Because I promise you, as we go out and sell insurance, I sell to retirees. You know what you notice about retirees? They're typically not fat. Do you know why? Because fat people die first. Okay. You got to have health. Okay. Now, I don't know how we want to say that or whatever that looks like. But you, and what I mean by that is, isn't about how much you weigh, what you eat, how much water you take in, what nutritional products are you on. I'm not trying to sell you any, but I'm just telling you to live a healthy life. You got to put in to get out good stuff. You can't put in bad stuff and expect good things to come out. It doesn't work like that. Mm. So I would say when it comes to the order, it's first your space and gratitude, and then it's going to be your health. Do you notice what that's about? Two things all about you, right? It isn't about somebody else because again, when we're on a plane, what do they tell us on a plane? They say, okay, mothers that are traveling with little ones, please remember in case of an emergency and the masks come down, what does the airline want you to do first? Put yours on first. Put yours on first. There's no way. Those are my babies. I could never put my mask on first. Are you kidding me? If you don't have a mask, these kids are going to be motherless. Put the mask on. Okay? We need these kids to have a mother. You're no good if you're not breathing. You need to breathe so these kids can breathe. Hello? Mm -hmm. Right? That's what you have to buy into. So when we're talking about this, it seems a little selfish. You got to be a little selfish so you could be rooted invested the invested america you like that rooted I like that okay, you got to be invested so you can grow mm. so the order okay what is the order it's gratitude and then it's your health okay and then goal what are you doing t- today every the goal today and i'll tell mm. you what i mean let's just say cody that your goal this month as a new agent is man Ali, i want to make 1500 a week on a consistent basis Okay. What activities are we going to do for that? Because that's part of the goal. Well, to get 1500 from what you're telling me, you want me to book 15 appointments, get in front of 10, and you think I could sell three and I'll make my money. Absolutely. 
So what we're going to do, so today, you know, part of that 15, 10, and three goal you might have for the week, today I'm running five appointments. That means the day doesn't end until I run five. Mm. What happens if they don't show? Go to McDonald's. What if they don't show? Visit someone at Starbucks. What if they don't show? Go door knock until your next appointment. You're getting in front of five because you said so, because you have order. You, you took care of your gratitude. You took care of your health. And now you're out to do what you're supposed to provide and do your job. Do your task. You got to be committed. You got to be focused and you got to think about it and you got to evaluate it. And it's, it's, you can't lollygag. It's every day, dude. It's intentional. It's not easy. Yes. No, it's not, man. It's not at all. Um, what, uh, it, what should they do if they want to get in hold of you? Uh, they want to get in touch with. Holly. I'm so grateful for you saying that. Yes, sir. Uh, please, if you want to get a hold of me, you can at a couple different emails. You can, Ali is spelled A L L I E at theinvestedamerican.com. Or you can go to Ali at alisala.com. Boom. And by last name is S A L E H. So it's Ali at alisala.com or Ali at theinvestedamerican.com. My cell phone number is 918 513 2797. Why do I give my cell phone up? Because I want to talk to people. The mm. only way I'm going to grow is if I talk to people. And you know what? I'm trying to stay busy. You know, I'm not going to be upset that I'm busy. I'm going to be grateful that I'm busy because I'm trying to be busy. Yeah. You know, that's how I'm going to grow and help other people grow. We can only do it together. That's right. man. Yeah. Let's do it together. That's all we can do. We got to do it together. Yeah. I love it, dude. Well, thank you for being on today. Appreciate you being part of the channel, the podcast. Love what you're doing. Love being a part of everything you're doing and love doing stuff with you, man. You got to get to Springfield soon. Yes. I would love to come. I'd love to do another show with you. I'd love to sit in your studio and do it with you, dude. I love it. I'm excited about it. Let's do it. Thank you for being on today. Hey, buddy, I'm grateful for you. Thank you so much. God bless you and your team, buddy. I always appreciate your guys' team and support. Dylan, all the guys, Ali, it doesn't matter who it is. You guys have all been great. Thank you. Dude, you're amazing. We love you. We awesome. appreciate you. you Thank you for listening to the podcast, and we'll see you on the next one. Welcome back to the CA Power Players Podcast. We have the Mr. David DuFord back in Springfield Mo in the studio. Dave, welcome back. To Greetings day. and salutations. Dude, I, like, I love spending time with you, man. Well, thank you. I, I do too. I really do. It's fun. You're such a great host. Uh, we've had such a nice time at Chipotle a couple times. Yeah, can't, man. 